Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you a new campaign of Ultimate General American Civil War. We are using the JMP mod and we are playing as the Confederates. So this will be a pretty fun, lengthy campaign. It'll also be pretty difficult because the JMP mod does change a lot of things. One of the things you can see right off the start is that it shows um, what your unit's condition is and your morale right at the top, something I really like. Also, when you come across enemy units, you don't actually know how many men are in their unit until uh, until later or like getting close engaging with them or I think if your reconnaissance is high enough. We did start with higher reconnaissance in this. Um, also, you'll notice that the, the base speed is different. However, I've modded it back to the to what should be the basic speed of the game. So I was on slow mode while while we kind of just do the intro for the game. But uh, th there's a bunch of config files for this game. The only thing I've changed so far is the speed of the game because I just find that the base speed of the GMP mod is not very conducive for recording on YouTube, at least not for live commentary. It's just, it's just too slow. Um, and that's, that's fine. I, I get why they change the speed. It's just not, definitely not for me. I, I definitely prefer something that is, that is much faster. So we're going to charge these skirmishers, get them out of here. One thing I do like about the JMP mod is the the AI's use of skirmishers in this game. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And we're just going to eat them up, though. Um, Cav are really good at, at chewing up skirmishers. And they they have changed that quite quite significantly, which is something I really, really appreciate. Because in the base game, skirmishers were probably too powerful that is probably a probably a fact um and by skirmishers i do mean the detached skirmishers not the not the skirmishers like hexama right here um in the base game you could like win just with detached skirmishers and that was pretty pretty ludicrous is there an enemy right there i don't know the the confederates their move thing is red and then the attack is also red, so I'm not entirely sure how that all works. Um, but I do want to cut off the enemy from reinforcing over here. Oh, okay, so there's there's those skirmishers I was worried about over here. So let's just make sure that our that our cav isn't in any compromised position. Here comes the enemy, which is perfect. If we can stop them from getting into the fort, that is that'll be amazing. And then we just need to wipe out the enemy before we go and take the fort. Because then taking the fort will be considerably easier. The The first part of the of the Confederate campaign, or the, the first battle I should say, is a lot easier than the Union first battle. But then the second part is kind of like just as hard. I'm having a hard time seeing those guys. There we go. Charge. They did get a volley off, but... We should then be able to absolutely wipe them. I love that cavalry is really good against skirmishers. I, I think that is something that a lot of games do wrong. Um, we already have reinforcements. That's interesting. Maybe um, I didn't think that the reinforcements came that fast. So the Yankees seem to determined to defend the fort. We've got reinforcements and supplies. Use them wisely, General. Um, as many of you have heard in previous games that I've played, or even this game, I'm not a big fan of pausing battles during the battle itself, but when reinforcements come onto the battlefield, I usually do a quick pause, give them their orders to move out, and then get back on with the game. I just, that's how I prefer to play, that's how I've sort of been brought up playing uh, real-time strategy games. You never used to have pause buttons, so I, I just prefer playing it. I also think it's a lot better for YouTube. Um, I don't I don't find it enjoyable watching other people spamming the pause button, so I, I can't imagine that there's a lot of people out there that enjoy that, but that's not to say that there is a right or wrong way to play real-time strategy games. I just have my preferred. So for those of you that are new to the new to watching me play these type of games, you'll you'll probably notice I will pause at the very beginning of battle, give out orders, and then I will usually pause when their reinforcements give out orders, and then they'll be very, 
very limited pausing uh, in between that because that's just how I prefer to play. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the rundown here. You'll also notice if you're new to the channel, my videos do look a little bit different than other people's videos. I record on an ultra wide monitor. I, I bought it for my own personal pleasure and I, after using it for so long, I was like, I can't play on a small monitor anymore. So that's why my videos look different because I record on it and I I I upload it in in the native resolution of my monitor. Uh, so I do recommend if you watch my videos on a regular size monitor, going on theater mode in YouTube makes the videos look absolutely amazing. Um, I, I, I will say they look phenomenal in theater mode and then of course if you have a widescreen monitor just uh, hop that bad boy on full screen and you will get the the amazing full screen of um, full screen experience and it, it should look pretty awesome I, I I really enjoy playing these games on full screen obviously it makes things a little bit smaller at times so take that um, for as you will uh, I will try sometimes to zoom in where possible, like over here I can zoom in onto this. I'm amazed these units are not... I'm amazed that unit is steady because it is, it is getting flanked and this unit's getting flanked too. So that's um, a, a little bit interesting there that they're, they're not really, really wavering at all because my, my cavalry want to really hop on them and and take them out so uh also one thing to note in the gmp mod i'll say one thing there's a million things to note uh skirmishes like this you're not going to cause the amount of damage that you would in the base scheme that is on purpose they purposefully changed it um it, it's about cr causing morale damage to the enemy and trying to make them waver that is that is basically the strategy with this so they they are starting to waver so we're going to move crocker up and then they are definitely wavering now so let's let's move these guys up we'll have crocker um try and try and eat that unit basically and now oh they have surrendered perfect okay and that is that is what you want you do want surrenders oh no 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 oh man they turn and hit the cav that's that's uh that's rough all right, so we do have the surround over here. Probably don't need Kemper. And then Crocker will ride in and charge them, and hopefully we can get another surrender before they they shatter. I would love another another surrender. Nope, they shattered. Okay, well that's fine. We don't need everybody to to surrender. I would like Crocker to have more men going into the next phase of the battle, but you know you can't always get what you want that's a rolling stone song right can't always get what you want something like that i think it was uh wait wait no it was no satisfaction was the one where they went to like a hotel or whatever and got terrible service i i can't remember good old rolling stones that they, they were around during the civil war so that's you know why we can talk about them that's a joke for those of you that don't understand my terrible sense of humor. I make a lot of very, very dry, dry humor jokes uh, while I'm playing, and most people, I would say, get them, but every once in a while I get a comment and I'm like, it was a joke. Don't take what I said seriously, it was a joke. All right, so we're gonna move up. This is my favorite thing in all of Ultimate General American Revolution is the crisscrossing of units. I get told, move one unit at a time, and it's like, well, why is there the ability to move multiple units at once, then? Um, it's, apparently it's a long-standing issue, it has something to do with pathing. Uh, Panda Kraut is apparently looking into it for, for Ultimate General American Revolution. It probably will never be fixed, and I'll probably just have to deal with it until, you know, the end of time. I would like you guys to get closer. Distance does matter with a lot of these weapons, especially because I bet these guys have 
Oh, they have Mississippi's reboard muskets there, so Allen has terrible. Minier Burton. I've never heard of this gun before. That sounds pretty cool. Does that have anything to do with the the Minier? Is it the Minier ball? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I think I'm getting that wrong. So we are. We need Quicksilver up over here. I would like Crocker to move over here, just in case he can get in on the cav or on the um, not cav, the artillery. Who else is over here? Let's bring the captured guys over. Oh, our supplies. I was like, what is the second thing over there? I don't think there are any skirmishers left over there, but just in case there are, I would I would much rather have those guys not return on the side of the Union. It okay, looks like we have secured the four. Battery B surrendered. Perfect. Move. Move on up. Um, you guys don't need to show your flank, though. That is... That is something. And I apologize. My cat really is not understanding that I am recording right now. So if you keep hearing her or if my voice gets muffled all of a sudden, it's because she jumped right in front of the of the microphone. Looks like we captured everybody, so that was that was pretty good if I say so myself. On to the second part of the mission. The fort has served our purposes for some time has prevented enemy supply ships from passing this section of the river. But now the Union is on the offensive ironclads approach to bombard us. And there'll be two ironclads up here. And then the enemy comes through this way. They have quite a few men, to be honest. Federal infantry has disembarked west of the fort and is moving to attack. And we get a couple reinforcements coming up this way, but they're a little late to the battle. We have called for help and more troops will arrive shortly to support the defense. It is advised to deploy some skirmishers along the ridge west of the fort to delay the Yankee advance, which we will do that. Detached skirmishers, as I said, not as good in the JMP mod, which I think is a, a good thing. Uh, if you guys watched the last campaign I did as the Union, I think in the Battle of Chickamauga we destroyed the entire Confederate army with basically detached skirmishers after they broke upon us or broke uh, broke on our defenses. So we need uh, we need to buy time for our fort's batteries to counterfire and disable the ironclads. General, hold your ground at all costs. We must prove today the rebellion has a strong foundation that will fight for every inch of southern soil. Now we're we're going to detach skirmishers. That is for sure. Fortifications are definitely better in this, but that doesn't mean that our troops are. Um, <laughs> that doesn't mean our troops are invulnerable. I do want to kill those ironclads before the enemy. Before the enemy makes it to to our lines, so I do need do need these skirmishers to get out and about and hopefully delay the enemy. They're probably already crossing the river, looks like it. Yeah, and they probably have detached skirmishers too, so that's a that's another thing to keep in mind. Yep, so there's is it Battle? His name is Battle. So you can see here, we don't know how many men are in these units over here, and they have question marks until you get into battle with them, and there you can see like the actual actual numbers over here. So uh, I really like that feature. I think that's pretty cool. We've already killed one ironclad. Pretty awesome. And then just need to basically hold them off. The longer we can hold them over here and get our reinforcements up, the better. I don't remember exactly when the reinforcements arrive. I also think this artillery we might move down once it's done taking out the ironclads. Um, okay, so ooh, that is some nasty artillery fire. I do think we might need to... They, they are fresh and heroic at the moment, so they haven't taken too many casualties. Um, so there's Crocker. We'll move him behind their lines. See if we can see if we can maybe get into their artillery. You can see these are detached skirmishers, I believe. Burnham, Battle, although not that I see any regiments 
named those. These guys are wavering, so let's get them out of here. Um, they probably need to reattach to their... These guys are also wavering. And then let's just have... Oh, I didn't mean to route. I just meant to... I pressed G instead of F, if you guys are wondering there. Ooh, that's... Uh, yeah, let's get these guys back with their... At least those guys back with their, their parent units. You guys can go down over here. Crocker, you'll you'll need to attack the, the artillery sooner rather than later. We'll move Cable down to about here, and then we'll have a reserve unit here. Uh, fortifications, while better in the GMP mod, they're still not, like, the greatest thing since sliced bread. So just keep that in mind. I would like to take out some of these skirmishers though and crocker's really good at doing that so i think i think we might we might go hunting for skirmishers that might be a plan i just i don't want their infantry to immediately turn and hit our hit our cav while we try that. I wonder if we can move you guys down here just a little. Okay, I need you guys hitting real infantry, not skirmishers. I would love a reinforcement, so our reinforcements aren't going to make it in time, which is a big, big bummer. Okay, can you guys move out and hit there. Can you guys charge over there? There's reinforcements. You guys also need skirmishers out over here. Okay, eat those skirmishers. You should be able to. You took a nasty flank hit, but... Okay, and then get out of there. Perfect. That's kind of what I want. And then... You guys need to get up ASAP. I want these skirmishers in the woods over here, you guys moving up, and then you guys need to form a new... You guys need to get up over here, is basically the, the importance of that. Alright, so looks like... Looks like we could probably get Crocker into a bunch of these. I feel like we could get those skirmishers. We could move you guys up. Move you guys up. Really trying to distract their, their artillery. Thankfully they hit what I wanted them to hit. And that was the skirmishers and not the cav. Uh, they got a little shot off, but nothing, nothing crazy. It was going pretty well. So let's move, let's move Crocker across the road. See if we can get... Come on, move up, move up, move up. I need, I need all of their stuff distracted so we can get them with our cav. Cavs seem really good in this. Uh, we got caught in the river, but I think that's fine. We should be able to get, I don't think generals can, can recapture Supplies. I'm not entirely sure. But if we can get all of their artillery, that'll be perfect. Um, I would have liked... Would have liked the... Uh, oh, the general can retake supplies. That's, that's interesting. Okay. Ooh, not what I wanted. Those guys rallied while Crocker was taking on the artillery. 
Okay. Um, can we get those guys out of there? Continue hitting them in the flank. And it looks like we are doing quite the job over here. So if we move Cable up a little, Terry should... Terry should really fail. The more we can get to surrender, the, the better. I would like them to not get their artillery back, but... You know, that doesn't mean that that'll happen. I would like Crocker to not take any terrible casualties here. Over here, routing Burnham, so that's really good. We could probably move you guys out over here and move you guys into there. Yeah, let's just get you guys all... I don't know if their, their general is dead or not. He's not quite. That's fine. We will move these supplies over here. Actually, let's move you guys there. You guys will do fine over here. Oh, get Crocker out of there. We don't need you taking fire. And then the general's not really important in this situation, so that's... Okay, supplies are needed over here. They need ammo. These supplies are needed over here. Let's get Alan moving up over here. And then move you up. You guys are probably needed over here now. You're probably useless in your current position. So these guys are tired, very tired. Where's, uh... Okay, there's those supplies. That seems... Although I don't want you turning your point, so... There is that problem. I think Quicksilver needs to move out over here. And I think we are at the point where we should really, really consider surrounding the enemy. Let's get you guys like so. Can you guys get behind? That would be fantastic. Because the more damage we can do here, the better. Uh, you know what? Stay on your little thing. That's fine. So we've got skirmishers hitting them in the rear flank. I believe you can have skirmishers hold their position now. Yeah. That's that's an amazing tool. Or is it that you can have them stop skirmishing? I don't remember. There's there's something there was a change to skirmishers and I don't exactly remember how it works. Let's have all of you move up. The, the more damage we can do, the better. Okay, you guys are actually wavering though, which is... is a problem. Can you guys run there? That would be great. You guys are low on ammo even though you're next to an ammo storage, that's that's always fun. Keep Quicksilver in the fray. Move you guys up. Um, let's see, can we can we move you guys across the river? Man, Nicholas is being very annoying. Like, I don't exactly know what he's doing. Very interesting that they can capture, that generals can recapture supplies. I'll have to remember that. Where'd, uh, where'd Crocker go? He could probably cause some of these units to surrender, now I think about it. We could probably have you two move up like so, have you two move up like so. And then you guys could probably go down this way. You guys could charge into there. Yeah, 
Yeah, they, they immediately shattered. They got stuck in the stuck in the river. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, things are not going well for the perfect. There's a capture. You you want to capture as many men as possible. I don't know if I said this in the first part, but the the amount of stuff that you recover from the enemy, you get more for capturing the enemy than you do for shattering them. So anytime you can you can capture them as opposed to shattering them, that's more guns that you will that you'll recover from the battlefield. And you guys just like get out of there so slow. You're in my way. All right, looks like looks like they are fleeing. So send Crocker in to to really force the situation and try and cause a surrender and there we go there's the surrender so that was pretty good if i do say so myself we captured nearly 1600 men we caused 4397 casualties we took 793 lost one gun lost 106 cav and uh for those of you that are wondering what the name of my general is it is general quick silver two words um so his last name is silver i think that you know is a little bit better than like quick silver gaming or quick silver whatever well, that's kind of cool. It shows you the stars here. It shows you what shows you what weapon they have. I like that. That's a it's a little quality of life change in the JMP mod. And then you can see our kill to loss ratio. You can see that the Confederates were vastly superior than the Union. At least I think according to this list, that's how it looks. Loss wise, we did have Kemper did lose, you know, decent chunk of men. And then Quicksilver was promoted to Brigadier General. He was a Colonel. So that is pretty awesome there. And then goods, um, you know, it's the first battle. I don't expect much. So recovered or rescued 789 Mississippis. I like to see that. And then actually we, we recovered or rescued a lot more than we lost. So that's, that's interesting. I like that. I don't know if that's the case in, in all battles. We do have reconnaissance 4 and one of the big differences well i mean jmp mod just changes a lot of things but the the different stats that you have like reconnaissance do different things and one of the things reconnaissance does in this is you you capture or rescue more weapons at the end of the battle this is also cool didn't realize like so you can actually see the stats of the gun here that's something new at least i think it's new i've i've never seen that show up before so i'll probably be like amazed and awed by all the changes in jmp mod i haven't really played the jmp mod much before i've really only played the the base game i did a couple test battles and that's where i determined that i needed to up the the speed of the game um the the base speed of the jmp mod just it's too slow for my liking uh that doesn't mean it's you know too slow for everybody but there's you know a slow down button if i really want to slow down the game uh, I'm just really bad at changing speeds of the game, so the so the suggestion of like just utilizing the two times speed a lot it doesn't fit my playstyle. While it makes tons of sense if I was just better at swapping between speeds, that that suggestion would work really well. But for me, it's not because I always forget to speed up the game. So here we go: Civil War campaign medal. Uh, we exchange 1,559 prisoners. Or 1,093 additional recruits, which that's pretty, pretty good. I think the base game like always capped the recruits at like 1,000 or something. It was really weird. So here we go. Here's what our army looks like. So Siegfried, Kemper, and Cable were the ones that we got from that. And then Tom Preston is our colonel. One of the things, there is something in here that... Your your commander does better the more battles he battles led one. So this has something to do with how well he leads his men. And I'm I'm not entirely sure how it works, but uh units officer become casualties. I don't know. Um not really sure. I, I was told though that like the more battles that he leads his men into, the better. So I did do musketry drills on all of these guys. Oh, that was something I changed in the config file. Was your your base starting perks for your your starting units? 
um, because the the different perks you get are way different in this in the JMP mod than they are in the base game. And you know, like the the AI always gives you the perks that you don't want. So we took horse artillery for cable, and we took the uh, musketry drills for our infantry, which was accuracy and then i think that was better reload time i'm assuming minus five percent reload time means better reload time uh i was told that perks are is is very important to to get perks in this game so a, a one star unit is insanely better than a zero star unit two star much better than a one star etc whereas in the base game sometimes it felt like uh the stars didn't necessarily matter because it just changed your stats. Uh, you can see spotting and stealth. Those are new. And they start with MJ and G type 2. I believe that's in the in the base game. Springfield 1855. That's interesting that they start with that. 3 inch ordnance. Also interesting. So here's where I started with our career points. We get two at the very beginning. Um, I do need to look at where I need to go for army organization because uh, we might be dumping most of our points into army organization at the beginning. There's a debate on politics versus economy. Seems like economy can be very strong late game. It also helps the amount of money that you sell weapons for, which is good. Politics is obviously just you gain more money from everything overall. And then medicine and training seem decent, but maybe not as good as in the base game. And reconnaissance 4 seems kind of like a must. And then I think Logistics 4 also seemed like a must too. So that's just sort of the, the thought process here. Let's go take a look at the battles map for one. I'm not going to read these correspondences because as I found out, they're just sort of like basically AI auto-generated stuff. So first non-major battle we have here is Newport News. So I just want to take a peek at what kind of forces we need for Newport News. And it is a whole four brigades, so we won't really be building up our army much going into this. We do... Okay, I remember this one. There's going to be a lot of this where I'm like, what is this battle again? Okay, yeah, I remember. Um, For those of you that are new or just need a reminder, I, I really haven't played this game since it was an early access. So the last campaign I did was kind of like the first full-blown campaign I've done in the release and this game released I think like seven years ago or something so I I have like 400 hours in this game I played this a ton in early access but never really played it once it released which is weird because this is one of my uh favorite games to be honest I, I really like the style of this game that I like the linear progression campaign where you build up your forces um, like add guns to them, have your commanders. I, I like the RPG aspect along with the campaign aspect and then the real-time strategy battles. So that's just something to keep in mind. So looks like we get a bunch of forces here. If I remember, this is a defensive mission. They they really attack this pretty hard. And then I think this should be the first battle of Bull Run is the other battle. I hit the wrong button. Yeah, first battle of Bull Run or... Uh, First Battle Manassas, this is where kind of like Stonewall Jackson makes his makes his name and uh, kind of where that all escalates from there. The reputation points are different and I, I was told that the politics actually affects the reputation points. So that's something to keep in mind there too. And then let's just take a look at what we can bring to this battle. So we can bring eight brigades. Woo! Yeah, super crazy. So... We probably won't go too heavy into army organization. We'll probably put like a point. What can we do? Max division one, max brigade. So if we do army organization two, next level is, oh, this, I like how this is laid out. I feel like the tooltips are different. So next level is one core, two division per core, four brigades per division. So we might, uh, we don't need that until bull run and we get a career point. From the next battle so we might do something like one more politics one more logistics to start I, I think that's probably where we will go I think that that seems like the the best idea here so we'll we'll do we'll hit apply there what is logistics 15% additional ammo 
1.25 stock multiplier that's huge 0.625 artillery stock shop multiplier or shop stock reading it backwards 1.5 percent resupply discount and plus 15,000 15, maximum supply of one at 10 points deploy two supply wagons per court that's that's big two supply wagons wow uh that might be worth it getting that up to level 10 whereas reconnaissance you can see here um so at six points we'll get partial info about unit status 125 extra spotting 1.1 weapon recovery multiplier and plus display flank notification on enemy units i feel like we already get that so reconnaissance yada yada there, there's a lot of things to look different here i don't remember if army organization does change your okay a lot of things give you resupply discounts so that's pretty cool i like that oh and then the the casualty pool is pretty cool in this um just change so you have like base recruits veterans wounded and badly wounded and from what i understand after like every battle badly wounded go to the wounded pool wounded pool goes to the veteran pool and then you can recruit veterans or recruits and then after every major battle like i think uh the remaining guys in your badly wounded pool disappear i, I think that's how it is if you guys know better let me know in the comments below i'll probably get a lot of this wrong i probably need to pull up the cheat sheet for jmp mod so i i have i'm better informed about all of this stuff but that's another cool thing i think though that'll be it for this episode it's been like 10 minutes of me rambling on about you know different things of the jmp mod and some strategies that i'll have i realize i didn't hit apply here i'm probably going to save um save before i hit apply on those and i always recommend to people once you get to this screen here hit save so that you can like tinker around with stuff and try to make the the best of everything um i do want to take a quick peek into the armory just so you guys can see what we have going for us we probably will st stay away from like muskets oh the reboard is better oh yeah it's not a reboard farmer oh did they completely get rid of the farmers i remember the the confederates having like something called a farmer so maybe they turned that into just a musket and then a reboard musket which looks slightly better than the 1842 i'll have to look at that Pandakraut made this cool little like damage chart so you can get an idea of how the different weapons work and uh i really appreciate stuff like that so very very cool and then the cavalry and then the artillery is completely different <laughs> only one 24 pounder howitzer available oh man i really like those things blakely's british cannon 4.5 inch siege wow i would love one of those i'll have to go through and see if there's a big difference we'll probably be using a lot of 12 pounders and 10 pounders i, I like these a lot or was it the ordinances i liked a lot i'll have to go through and look at all of this but uh, as i said i'm kind of like rambling at the moment and just going over things that i like talking about the mod and all of that so we'll, we'll end the episode here um please uh like comment subscribe all of that youtube jazz if you guys ever want me to name a unit uh there's the option to name units in this game which i, I really like my thoughts was i was going to go for like a very stereotypical southern unit names i was actually thinking of looking at like sec schools or something like that and taking a lot of those like georgia bulldogs and was it a um, roll tide thing like like little little fun things like that i'm not like super stuck into that but i i do want to create a southern theme for my confederate army kind of like how in our union playthrough we had a very like american union theme where it's like the patriots and um we we did name them some after states but we we did a lot of like very very u.s sounding stuff whereas for the confederate i i kind of want to very very much dive into that like southern southern feel southern hospitality comfort um 
SEC school names, things like that. I just think it's cool. So we'll probably have a unit called the Louisiana Tigers because that is a historical name. I believe you get the Stonewall Brigade as a as a unit, um, as, as a reward later. So that's just a thought process there. So if you want, if you want me to name a unit, try to keep it to a Southern theme or uh, something that kind of fits the the feel of the Confederates. Uh, post it in the comments below, or if you want to. There's a link to my Discord in in uh, the details below. I'll probably create a thread for unit names there, um, and you're more than welcome to join and, and create names there. So that is it for today's episode. As always, guys, until next time.